I remember laughing out loud when Foam Stars was announced at PlayStation State of Play in May 2023. The game looked like a blatant ripoff of Splatoon, and I honestly couldn't believe Sony had actually chosen to spotlight this game at the event. The internet's reaction was similar, with a lot of negativity surrounding Foam Stars. And as Sony continued marketing the game over the coming months, I never had much interest. However, Square Enix did something very smart by agreeing to be a free-to-play game for PlayStation Plus members day one when it was released on February 6, 2024. After hearing this, I decided to give the game a try. I have a feeling a lot of people will not give this game a fair shot. It's really easy to sit here and say this game sucks because they copied Splatoon. However, just because this game is similar to Splatoon doesn't mean that it can't have value you and it doesn't mean that Foam Stars isn't worth playing. I'll try not to mention Splatoon too often throughout this video, however at times I'm gonna have to. It's the only baseline for this type of game we have, it's the only thing out there I can really compare Foam Stars to. But again, I will only use Splatoon when necessary and I will judge this game on its own merits. So with all of that said, let's get right into it. What do I think of Foam Stars? Well, I have a lot to say, but let's start off with a general overview of the game and what there is to do in it. The game starts you off in an overworld section. This is where you can join a match, go to the shop, customize your character, or practice. What's cool is that you can actually customize this area to be unique to you. And on top of that, when playing in a party with friends, you will all spawn into this area. So when you customize this area, it's not just for yourself, you can share it with whoever you are playing with as well. This is a small feature in the game, but I think it's pretty cool, and it does help set it apart from that other game with an overworld that works in the exact same way. Anyways, let's get into the gameplay. There are several unique classes in the game, each with a different primary weapon, two cooldown abilities, and a superstar skill, which is basically an ultimate. The classes are exactly what you would expect from any class-based shooter. There is a shotgun class, a sniper class, an engineer style class, you get the idea. I think they did a good job making each of these classes feel unique to each other. Each class definitely requires you to alter how you play, which is how it should be. My only complaint here is that these characters come across as pretty generic. There's not a lot of personality or character given to them, at least in the multiplayer modes. I gave each class a try, and my personal favorite was the Assault Rifle class, who I later learned is named Penny. Penny is the all-around solid, basic class you would expect from the Assault Rifle character. I found her to be the most fun to play. So let's talk about the modes you'll be playing with these classes. The modes found here do not revolve around spreading as much of your colored foam around the map as you may expect. The game modes found in Foam Stars are much more focused on objectives or getting kills. Well, excuse me, this game doesn't call them kills, it calls them chills. First mode available to play right away is called Smash the Star. This is a simple team deathmatch style mode, however there is a twist. When one team runs out of lives, one player is chosen as the star player. The star player is chosen from whoever has the best stats, however I'm not exactly sure what the game qualifies as a good stat. What I mean is I don't know if the game values chills, or foam spreads, or damage, or assists, etc. But however they decide the system works because I found most Smash the Star matches are pretty competitive and end up coming down to both stars battling it out. I never found myself in a match where one team just got absolutely bodied, as you may see in other team deathmatch modes. Sometimes I actually felt it was a little bit too even, with the matches going on for an amount of time that I would consider to be slightly too long. If both star players are overly cautious and play defensive, the matches can start to drag along. However, this did mean that matches got pretty intense, which was entertaining. Overall, this is a good mode, and I like that they tried something a little different here when they easily could have just gone with a basic team deathmatch mode. At the time of this review, there are also two additional modes in the rotation. And yes, I said in the rotation. Right off the bat, I noticed there was a timer next to the second mode, and I wasn't sure what it meant. After letting the timer run out, I realized it is because they have the secondary modes on a schedule that changes every hour. I don't typically like when games do this because I want to just be able to play the mode I want and not have to wait. My best guess for why they did this is to avoid splitting up the player base too much. They may have been worried about long queue time, if they added too many extra modes, especially in the future if this game doesn't garner a super large player base. Regardless of the reason, I'm not a huge fan of this decision, but let's just hope I like both of these modes so I won't have to be annoyed when one isn't available. Well, that wasn't quite the case. After a few matches of Smash the Star, I jumped into the first alternative mode, titled Happy Bass Survival. This is a fairly simple 2v2 round-based mode. First team to chill both players wins the round. However, there are still four players per team, with two players battling the enemy, while the other two players assist from above. You assist your teammates by spraying foam on the map. Your foam will slow down the enemy team if they walk on it, while your teammates will move
move faster on it. I was really not a big fan of this mode. It's not very fun to just watch and have to assist in the rounds that you aren't actively playing. And this is partly because it just doesn't feel like you're doing that much to help. And due to the player count on each team, sometimes you have to watch for two out of the three matches in the game. So you're just stuck aimlessly spraying around the area where the action is for a couple minutes and then the game's over. Maybe there was something deeper here that I missed, and this would probably be more fun to play with a party of four who are all communicating, but for now I would have to recommend against this mode. On the bright side though, the other time secondary mode actually ended up becoming my favorite in the game. Rubber Duck Party is a payload style mode where teams compete to push the rubber duck into the goal. It works exactly like any other payload mode you've played before in a game like Overwatch or Team Fortress 2. You move the duck by standing near it and there are different checkpoints you hit along the way. There are also some unique features such as the option to dance on top of the duck. You are defenseless when doing this, but if you can get the whole animation to play out, it will give the duck a massive boost towards your goal. On top of that, spraying your foam in front of the duck will help it move faster. These things add a little more depth to the mode and also put a better focus on teamwork and strategy. This mode is a blast. I love the way it forces everyone to converge at certain points of the map. It's super chaotic and I feel Foam Stars is at its best when it embraces the chaos. On top of that, these matches felt the most competitive and engaging out of all the modes I played. Like I said, this became my favorite mode in the game, so it really is a shame I can only play it every other hour. I already mentioned how I was concerned with the decisions of having modes on a timer and I'm even more disappointed by it now. One mode is far and away better than the other in my opinion, and obviously it's just my opinion that Rubber Duck Party is way better than Happy Bad survival. However, what can't be denied is that these are two very different modes, which is why having them split like this just feels odd to me. These modes play so differently, and I would have to imagine someone who likes the chaos of Rubber Duck Party may not enjoy the slower, more tactical style of Happy Bass Survival. So having these two modes be the ones that are on the timer seems counterintuitive. If anything, I would argue Smash the Star and Rubber Duck Party should be the rotating modes since they both follow the 4v4 style instead of 2v2. There was also going to be a ranked mode, as well as event modes such as one plan for the weekend called Fry Yay Party. Neither were playable yet as of the time I was making this video, so I can't comment on them, but I wanted to note that they will be there. If PvP isn't your thing, you can head over to the Missions tab and play some wave based PvE. There are two different versions of this mode you can play. The first is a four player version called Squad Missions. You team up to take down the waves of enemies as they move towards your energy core. If all the players die or the energy core is destroyed, you lose. This mode was decently fun with a nice challenge. There was a normal and hard mode and normal mode was difficult enough to make us work for it but we cleared it with ease. However, hard mode was actually quite difficult and we lost it very quickly. If you're a fan of challenges, you'll get it with this mode. Another thing I liked about Squad Missions was that it let you choose between three random upgrades after each wave. This makes every attempt feel different and could lead to some interesting strategy between teams as players decide what stats and abilities they want to focus on. Missions also has a feature where you can use the points you earn in each attempt to level up your baseline stats like damage or health regen. I imagine this may be why hard mode felt so difficult because it was day one so no one was very upgraded. As you continue attempting runs and getting stronger it probably gets easier so there's a nice level of replayability there. There is one more form of missions called foam star missions and these can be played solo. This is essentially the light story mode of the game. However, unlike the squad missions, there's really no fun to be had here, at least from what I played. It's the same wave-based formula, however, the challenge from before is gone. They don't spawn in enough enemies and they move way too slow to ever pose an actual threat. I would like to see them update this mode to be a bit tougher. It makes sense that they would have to scale it back compared to squad missions since there is one player instead of four, but they really overdid it and need to up the spawn rate of enemies. Each character has three missions. I completed all three with the first character, Soa, and pretty quickly realized that these Foam Star missions are just borderline tutorials with enemies placed in specific ways to demonstrate how to use your different abilities. I don't mean to sound harsh, but Foam Star missions genuinely almost put me to sleep. This is the only form of single player content in the game and it is absolutely awful. If a wave based mode interests you, I would say you really need to stick with the four player squad missions because that's where the fun is. And so that's an overview of what Foam Stars has to offer right now. However, this is a live service game, so there will be constant updates. Hey, speaking of live service, that probably means this game has a lot of monetization. Let's check the store and oh my god, $45 for a special set bundle that comes with seven items? I play a lot of live service games and this has to be the most egregious pricing I have ever seen. And what makes things even worse is that this isn't even a free to play game. Yes, it is free right now if you have a PS Plus subscription, but after March 5th, that will no longer be the case and the game will then cost $30. So Square Enix actually
actually thinks people are gonna buy a $30 game and then drop $45 more on skin packs for every character. Absolute insanity. Now I will be fair and say that each item can be purchased separately. So for example, if you just want one skin, you can buy just that skin instead of being forced to buy the entire $45 bundle. This can save you some money and avoid forcing you to pay for things you don't want. So that does help a bit, but I stand by my point that these prices are just unacceptable. I can't stress enough how off-putting it was to check the store and see $45 bundles. And now imagine how I would have felt if I had spent $30 to buy the game initially. Overall, there is fun to be had with Foam Stars. Hop in with some friends for a night and you'll have a good time. Right off the bat, you will see that Foam Stars oozes with style. From the character designs, to the maps, to the music, the game has a great presentation. The game modes offer some unique twists from the standards we're used to. And although Foam Stars will probably always be known as that Splatoon ripoff, I think it did enough to differentiate itself. If you're already a PS Plus subscriber, I would recommend you hop in and give it a try. However, if you don't have PS Plus, or if you are seeing this video after March 5th when the game will cost $30, my opinion of Foam Stars becomes a lot more bleak. I cannot in good faith recommend this game for $30, primarily due to the live service and always online aspects of it. I'm very skeptical of this game's ability to hold a player base long term. Now I could be completely wrong, maybe it will take off and become a huge hit and everything I say next will be irrelevant, but I don't see that happening. And so if this game doesn't garner an audience, we know what's going to happen. We've seen how quick publishers are to pull the plug on live service games that aren't successful. So with that in mind, as much as I hate to say it, it wouldn't surprise me if Foam Stars is offline within a year or two, and that means the game would be completely unplayable since it is always online. If you pay $30 for this game and they shut these servers off, you're done. Nothing will be playable. There is that single player mode I mentioned, however, you won't even be able to play that. I tested this by disconnecting my PS5 from the internet and tried to play single player. The game wouldn't even let me get to the title screen without the internet, so that means even the single player mode will be gone if they shut these servers down at any point, and I think that will ultimately be the nail in the coffin for Foam Stars. It is really difficult to keep a premium, non-free-to-play live service game going, and that is especially true for an obscure one like this. Multiplayer games that aren't free-to-play often get stuck in a loop. The player count is low because no one is buying the game, but no one is buying the game because the player count is low, and I could absolutely see Foam Stars falling into this trap. Okay, let me stop rambling about the state of live service games and get back to Foam Stars. Foam Stars is a conflict game for me. It's weird, it's strange, it's niche, and I don't see a major audience forming for this one. If you're a PS Plus subscriber seeing this video within the free trial period, give it a shot and let me know what you think of Foam Stars in the comments below.